Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. I am TK and this is TTKK or better known as the trusty kitchen knife. And today we're going to be doing another unboxing of one of these drives. Before we do that, let's just have a look at the two drives I've got in question here. Some of you may have seen this on the internet. Uh, some articles have been floating around about this for quite some time now, maybe like seven, seven months or something. And I've actually done a video on this particular drive, so I've already unboxed this one. And this is the 970 EVO Plus 1 terabyte with the vertical box design, which is a new box design. And it also has like a controller chip there with nothing on it other than Samsung. And then we have this drive, which I'll be unboxing today. And this is a 970 EVO Plus 2 terabyte edition. But it has the older box design, the horizontal artwork and it has a Phoenix controller. I'm not sure if you can actually make that out on the camera there, but it still has the information. So I'm assuming that this drive is actually um, the older type of controller. This one has a controller from the 980 Pro, which I believe is the Elpis controller. And because it's backward compatible, I'm guessing they're just trying to use it for all of their drives. Now there have been some um, performance impacts with that, namely the sustained write speed. As far as I know, there's not too much difference in the day-to-day -day use and the other features of the drive and those things like the IOPS and uh, you know the, the theoretical read and write speeds like the 3500 megabytes read, things like that, they all more or less remain the same as long as you're within the SLC cache. Now, once we pass the SLC cache and go into the sustained transfer when you're doing large writes, I forgot what this cache size is, but I'll try and find it and mention it in the rest of this video, but then it would downgrade the write speed. Now, on this drive, I believe it goes down to now about 800 megabytes per second, and on the original drive, I think it's something like 1,400 megabytes per second. I'm gonna try and do some benchmarks in this video so we can see that. So before I open the two terabyte version, let's just have a look around the boxes. So naturally, the first thing is that one is vertical, one is horizontal. This is the newer design, and you'll see a lot of this uh, for the new drives, the 980 Pro as well, it will show the maximum read speed at the bottom there. And then moving to, and also there's another thing to note here, it says VNAND SSD, it doesn't say that on the box anymore. So on moving to the left side, again, you can see uh, this one mentions the VNAND again, just a difference in artwork really on the sides. And then we have, okay, they've chained the sides around, but there's not much around the size of the box. And then the back also has a different design. Right, you can see there's a difference in design on the back as well. And then if we have a look at, I think the serial numbers are along this side and the information around the drive. So I'm not sure if you can see this. Okay, I had a bit of problem getting that into focus, but I think I've got it there now. So a couple of things, let's just go through them. I'm not sure how clearly you can see all of this. But first thing to know is that the top one, the one terabyte version has, uh, is made in Korea. It has a production date of June 2021 and the one on the bottom is the two terabyte version made in China and the production date is August 2021. Now what's interesting about this is that it means this drive was clearly made afterwards but I've managed to get an old, older version of the drive. So I'm assuming that they must have changed the two terabyte drives later because I have seen reports of people getting the old packaging um, for the sorry getting the new packaging for the two terabyte version as well so that's really about it for the packaging itself and you know we can see here that the drives definitely have uh, different controllers by looking at the packaging so let's move the one terabyte out of the way get trusty kitchen knife back in the picture and let's open up this box and have a quick look at the drive. Maybe I'll go and get the old drive as well. It's actually in my laptop at the moment and we can have a look at that as well. So, here's the drive. Let's see if I can get rid of all of this stuff and get it into focus. Okay, so I had to cut that video short. I'm actually recording three weeks later now, had some focusing issues, so I cut that video short. And I've actually got the one terabyte drive out as well now from my laptop so I, we can compare them side by side. There's not much difference to see between the two. This is the one terabyte with the newer 
controller which is the Alpes controller shared with the 980 Pro and this is the 2TB which has the Phoenix controller as we saw earlier on the box. The only main difference is that this has HALB in the part number as the last four characters and the newer drive has HBLU for the part, last four characters of part number. So what I'm going to do now is show you the boxes of the 980 Pro and 970 EVO Plus so you can see how the artwork has become more in line with the new artwork of the 980 Pro for the new drives. Okay, so I've got the three boxes. You can see clearly that the 970 EVO Plus and 980 Pro for the new design have a very similar box layout. They're both vertical. The 980 Pro does have the Elpis controller they're showing. This one shows a blank one in case you end up getting a Phoenix controller. I'm guessing they did that to allow them to change the controller to whatever they want. And again, the one on the left is the old model, which has the Phoenix controller there written on the box. And this is the old design. So just wanted to show you that the new box does relate to the new, uh, the new 970 EVO Plus box does relate to the new 980 Pro box. So now let's jump into the PC where I'm gonna do some benchmarks with both of the drives. Okay, so I'm on my PC now and I've got disk management open here. I'm gonna try and show you the drives installed uh, in a picture on my PC. If I can add that in here, you'll be able to see that now. So I'm just gonna show you that I have two drives, the two terabyte EVO Plus as an M drive and one terabyte EVO Plus as an L drive. And if I right click properties on each of these drives, you will indeed see they are SSD 970 EVO Plus two terabyte and SSD 970 EVO Plus one terabyte. So the first thing we're going to do, and you can see here, they're in my PC as 931 GB and 1.81 terabytes, and these are both empty. So we're going to use Crystal Disk Mark for our benchmarks. So let's get rid of these windows for a moment. And I'm going to run the benchmark first on the one terabyte, which is here on the left, the L drive, and we're going to use a two gigabit file size. And the settings are set to NVMe SSD and profile is set to peak performance because that's what we're currently interested in. So so I'm going to click all and I'm going to pause the video here and come back when the test completes. Okay, so the first test on the one terabyte drive has completed and you can see we've got some pretty decent scores here. We're getting 3,500 megabytes per second read, 3,400 megabytes per second write and that's practically as advertised. And then the IOPS were hitting around 800,000 for both. So that's pretty good. So let's do the second drive now and I'll come back when that's finished recording and we can compare them. Okay, so it's quite interesting. As you can see, both tests have completed. And what's interesting here is that although we're hitting the 3,500 and 3,300 megabytes read and write speeds, when it comes to the random 4K test, it seems like the older drive is performing slower. And also that's true in the IOPS. But again, the last test here shows that the older drive is better. So maybe this is the benefit at least in synthetic benchmarks for the new Elpis controller over the Phoenix controller so maybe we won't do so much performance uh, with the newer drive but now I'm going to do another test so I've got my terminal window open here and what I'm going to do is create a dummy file and this is the way to do it fsutil file create new dummy dot test and then the file size, which is in bytes, so you have to have this massive number. So I'm going to try and create a approximately 300 GB test file, and I've got it in my dummy folder here. So I'm going to create that now, and that's done. So if I open my dummy folder here, you'll see I have this dummy.test file. So now I'm going to copy the dummy.test file onto the one terabyte drive first. So let's see what happens with that starting at around 3 gigabytes per second and that falls staying around 3 gigabytes dropped to 2.5 and at around 100 120 gigs we should see a drop below this when the cache the SLC cache is depleted It's good to see they've got a reasonable size SLC cache. So if it's over 100 gigs now, 130 gigabytes, and we're dropping all the way down to 800 megabytes per second. So we can determine that the cache size is around 
130 gigabytes and after that we will hit 800 megabytes per second so this is on the newer model of the drive the one terabyte which has the Elpis controller so it's going to stay there now right until the end of the copy so I'm just going to close that and let's bring up the two terabyte drive and do the same test so we're going to copy the dummy dot test onto the two terabyte drive again we're starting at 3.5 down to 2.5 as before and now again around the 100 gigabytes mark we should see it drop down to its maximum speed or sustained speed and there we go so it's around 100 gigabytes so it's a bit smaller but the benefit is that we are at 1.4 gigabytes per second that's quite a big difference it's almost double so 800 versus almost 1500 is six to seven hundred megabytes per second difference in that write speed so let's stop this now and you know just going back to the crystal disk marks course we did see that there are some differences in these two drives at least with the random 4k here we have 1600 megabytes as opposed to 3200 megabytes so i'm guessing this is just because we're running a two gig file size here and it's obviously performing better in these synthetic benchmarks and even the IOPS is a lot more it's strange that the write is higher than the read but that's what it is I ran it a couple of times and it was around 400,000 and 600,000 then at the bottom here you can see that this older controller is slightly is it slower I'm not sure what this number is for but we're getting a higher number in microseconds here so that shows that there definitely is a difference and I've only done the, like one benchmark with Crystal Disk Mark and then a sustained write speed, but I'm sure the tests are going to be more or less similar. Uh, we're going to have similar sort of differences between different benchmarks, whether you use AJA, A2 SSD, or whatever it might be. But clearly, there is an issue here. And unfortunately, we will be getting drives like the, well, I say unfortunately, but I don't think it's going to be a massive impact to most people in the real world because you're hardly ever going to, be writing big files if you are a content creator or something then you know obviously it might might be a problem but what i have noticed is that there are a lot of drives on the market and there's still very few of them that can maintain this 800 megabytes per second that we were seeing with the dummy dummy dot test file so that's something to you know think about that is it, it might still be a good value drive because it is quite competitive compared to other other drives uh, within this price range at least for the pci 3x4 uh, 3500 megabytes uh, read drives and a lot of them do top out below that 800 megabytes after the cache is depleted some of them have a slightly bigger cache some of them have a slightly smaller cache but ultimately i don't think you're going to see a massive difference in uh, in real world performance um, you may actually see a benefit with these higher iops numbers so i'm not sure how that will pan out uh, in the long term for people but i do think that this move to phoenix is not the worst thing in the world I still think that it's a fairly competitive drive in, in the current market and I hope that this video was helpful to anybody who was doubtful about buying the new drive. I don't really have any other drives uh, to compare with. I do have here a 980 Pro 1 terabyte, um, but that's again a PCIe 4 drive which can do a 7000 megabyte second read so it's not going to be a good comparison. But I think I'll end the video here. And thanks for watching. Please do feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please let me know.